when I was 13 years old, I got pregnant. And when I was 14 years old, I gave birth. And when I was 15 years old, I got pregnant again. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Minister Nay. I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today, I pray to encourage, to uplift, to inspire, and to help someone as I share my life my testimony of where the Lord has brought me from. I thought about it for a while and I always tell my family and my friends I would love to write a book. I started to write some stuff down but Part of my calling is talk. I love to talk. I love to encourage. I love to share. And I like to inspire people. I like to, I'm a, I call myself one of those ministries, the help ministry, who never want to see no one sad, who never want to see no one depressed or no one hurting, no one suffering, no one going through because I know it's a part of life, but I think a lot of that is because of what I went through as a child, as a teenager, and even as an, as an adult. So I'm here today to share my testimony, my life. I think I will do a part two. It all depends on how I feel while I'm speaking with you all. It all depends on how I'm led. I said before you today, as someone who loved the Lord, who really, really loved the Lord, because I come to understand that if it had not been for the grace of God, where would I have been today? And all praise and all honor and all glory belongs to God. There's a verse of scripture that says he reigns on the just and the unjust. And as my pastor always teaches that God hears you when you're in trouble, when you're broken, when you're going through, when your back is against the wall and you might be in a backsliding position, you might be um, in an area of your life where you don't even know God, where you don't even have a relationship with Him. But your grandmother, your mother, your grandfather, somebody prayed, somebody, you hear somebody praying and believing in this God. And when you get in trouble, you would call on the name of Jesus. You would say, God, help me, Jesus, help me. And you would realize that, oh, I am out of this situation. I came out, I am okay, I am well. That's God's grace and God's mercy. And for me today, it's always been God's grace and God's mercy. It's always been the love of God in my life. I didn't really talk to my family about this video but they know I want wanted to do this video for a while because when you have families, immediate families, and you have brothers and sisters and other family, you want to be careful as of to what you put out there. But because my life is but a testimony 
my life and where God has brought me from, I know without a shadow of a doubt, I know the things that I've gone through in my life. And sometimes we allow fear and we allow intimidation and we allow what people say that cause us feel timid. My husband liked to use that word timid. You feel scared, you feel shaky, you feel un at e unease. But I come to encourage someone today that I know my Redeemer lives. I know that God is my deliverer. I know that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I know that Jesus Christ is my savior. How do I know this? He saved me, he delivered me, and he set me free. I told y'all in an earlier video that, well in a video sometime back that my dad died when I was like three, three and a half years old. My mom died when I was 13, 14 in that area of my life. And I've been abused, I've been raped, I've been molested, I've been rejected, I've been taken advantage of, I've been beaten, you name it, as a young girl. As a young adult, I've experienced it. But look at me today. When I was about seven, I feel like it was about seven, maybe eight years old. My mom had this friend. And one day I was outside playing and she was hanging out some clothes to the line. And the gentleman came by, well, the man came by, and they began to talk. I was a child, so I was just playing, minding my own business. And she was to the line, hanging out the clothes, and they were having a conversation. I don't know what the conversation was about, because like I say, I was in the yard playing. So a few minutes later, she called me and she said, go with Mr. So-and-so, he was going to give you something, you bring it back to me. And I went with him. And when we got to his place, he took me inside of his apartment. And the first thing he did was told me to lay on the floor. And I lied on the floor. And he began to molest me. That was my very first encounter of molestation. And he was trying to do some stuff, but he realized that he couldn't do it. And he was like, keep still and keep your leg open and all of that stuff. And I was a child. I, I, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what to do. And he tried, he was there for like 20, 25 minutes trying to force himself on me. And the Lord had it so that one of his friends came by and knock on the wind and say, Hey, so-and-so, come, the fellas are waiting on us, come, we have to go. And that was how I was able to uh, escape. Um, the outcome of what it would have been if he had um, gotten the way he wanted, you know, with me. And I got up, put my underwear back on, and he sent me on my way. I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. It started right there. So as I got older, 
in my neighborhood. Um, the man will come around. The man, I was seven, eight, nine, ten, so the man will come around and there was always somebody feeling me up, touching me in certain areas. One time, the gentleman who my mom was involved with, he had some altercation with the police. And they locked him up, but they bailed him out. And they said the only way um, he will not be able to go to prison when he go to court is if he, you know, would have left that island where he was at the time. So after he got, they bailed him out. They packed him up in the wee hours of the morning. And I think they put him on a boat and he left that island and I guess went to another island. Like I said, I was about um, 10, 11 years old when this happened because my mother, she continued her relationship with that that man. So growing up as a little girl, um, all I saw was men, abuse, sex, alcohol. So after a few months, that the gentleman, the man left my mom. She got involved with this other man who had a brother, these two brothers. And while my mom and this other guy was dating, the brother decided that I guess it was okay to date me. I'm 12, 13. As I sat, sit here and talk to you guys, and I think about my childhood and I think about my teenage life, there was always somebody molesting me or taken advantage of me and I'm giving you all um, certain part of my testimony because I would perhaps come back and do a part two but I want to talk about the time when I got pregnant so my mom was dating one brother and the other brother thought it was okay to date me. Mind you, I'm 12, 13. And bear with me guys. So My mom was always um, like sick. She suffered with hypertension. So there are times she would end up in the hospital and she would be there for like a week, two weeks. And we would have to stay with the neighbor. So that is another part of, you know, another testimony that I would have to share. But I really want to talk about um, when I got pregnant. It's not easy. Um, 
I know I have family and friends that will watch this video. But you guys, you know my life, you know me, you know who I am. A lot of you know my testimony. But I just want to help somebody to know that God is on your side. And it doesn't matter how it looks. God is with you. He will bring you out and he will deliver you. Acknowledge him. Accept his gift of salvation. Allow him to come into your heart. Sometimes when we in our muck, in our filth, in our mess, God, he looked beyond all our fault and he see us. And he pull us up out of the muck and the filth. So, The guy begins to date me and 12, 13 years old, you don't know no better. You feel like it's okay, this person love you, you don't have a dad. You don't know that it's to have a dad, so you feel like that's love. So you accepted that because you're young. You're a child. You have all kind of emotions kicking up inside of you, so you accepted that. Okay, it's okay. This person loved me. This person cared about me, so I accepted that. So this man started to sleep with me. And he started to sleep with me. And I don't know. When I think about my life, sometimes you like want to blame yourself. But how does a child blame themselves for something that they don't know? They don't know better. They don't know what to do or how to do because they have not been taught. The Bible say train up a child in the way they should go and when they are old they will not depart. I didn't have no one in my life to say you're 10 years old, you're 9 years old. Don't let no one touch you to your chest, to your private part. Don't let no one kiss you. I didn't have that as a, as a 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 year old. Everything I saw, I thought was normal. My mom was a single mother. She did her best, to her best, to her knowledge, to provide for her children. But I was one of those children that didn't have that guidance, that direction. So the man and I in a relationship and the weird thing about it was it was okay for him to stay in our house it was okay for him to um, come in at night and sleep in our house while my mom and her friend was in her room, I was in the other room with the other man. I'm 13. So 
Think about it for a minute. So I'm 13 years old and I'm involved, I'm involved with this man who's about 25, 28 and the relationship, whatever it was, and then we discovered that I was pregnant. 